Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. I'm here with another Kansas City Royals game in my Kansas City Royals playthrough. We are in the, I believe, the third season. Let me go look at my managerial record, which is not very good, but uh, we are in... Yes, we are in the 2025 season, which is the third season. And uh, you can see we've started off 5-13. and 13. <coughs> um, We'll go to the standings page here. Um, not very good. Let's take a look at where we are in our rankings. Um, offense is tied for 12th, so we're doing better offensively. <coughs> Excuse me. God. We're doing better offensively than we've done in the past, but our defense is 30th. Um, in home runs, we're tied for 8th. So, yeah, offensively, we're, we're I don't even, I, I mean, I guess I could say we're, we're fine. If we had better pitching, we would be better off. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we, uh, we're definitely, pitching-wise, we are not doing well. So um, that's a problem. If, if you go here, we'll go to the team schedule. Uh, you can see we, uh, we lost 12 to 3 to the White Sox, and then 5-2 to two to the White Sox, and then 3-6 to six to the White Sox, and then 6-10 to ten to the White Sox. Then we lost 2 out of 3 to the uh, Astros, and then we lost uh, 3 games three games straight to the Mets, and then we lost 15-2 to two to the White Sox, and 2-1 um, to, to the White Sox. And so now we have the third game of the second series against the White Sox coming up. A 1.10 p.m. Uh, Central Time start. Then we'll have a day off so our pitching can recover, uh, our bullpen particularly. But we will get on with the game. Uh, we're going to finish today, and that will move us to the game of the day against the White Sox. The pitching match up is going to be, they're going to have Jordan Montgomery who in real life is now on Arizona, and uh, we are going to have Johnny Brito, and so let's just get on with that game. Uh, looks like we're okay here. I mean, Pomerantz has, uh, he's fighting some, uh, fighting through some nagging injuries, but he's good enough to be in the lineup. Everybody else is winding down, but as I said, we have a day off after this game, so that will be the day of recovery for them. So, I'm going to say everybody can play, and uh, our lineup is going to be Michael Massey leading off at second base. Salvador Perez, the catcher, will bat second. Caden Wallace will be at first base and batting third. Juan Soto, our new acquisition, our new expensive acquisition, uh, who is only hitting 259, will bat in the cleanup spot. Jairo Pomeraz will be the DH today. Um, Bobby Witt Jr. will be at third. He's only hitting 191. Johan Roja will be in right field. Diego Hernandez will be in center. And Tommy Troy will be the shortstop picking up the rear. Um, for the White Sox, they're going to have TA7, Tim Anderson, leading off and playing shortstop. Then Oscar Colas in left. Andrew Vaughn will be the DH. Colson Montgomery, who they apparently called up in this version of the game, and really I expect him to be up in 2025 for the real White Sox as well, will bat in the cleanup spot and play third base. Brian Ramos will be at first base for them. James Outman, who in real life is on the L.A. Uh, Dodgers, will play in right field. Jake Geloff will bat 7th and play 2nd base. In real life, he's on the A's. Reese McGuire will be the catcher. And in real life, he's on some other team. I don't know what team it is I, off, off the uh, top of my head. I think maybe Toronto. And then uh, Michael Ciani is going to be in center and pick up the rear for them. And as I said, Jordan Montgomery pitching for them. He comes in 1-1 one and one with a 3-12 earned run average and a 104 whip. So it's going to be a rough game. we got to get through this one, though. Hopefully we can win it. Lead-off batter will be Michael Massey, our second baseman. We've got a little tour of uh, um, whatever the name of the White Sox field is now. Uh, guaranteed rate field. 
and Montgomery deals. And uh, Massey, did he go deep? He did. All right, nice leadoff home run by Michael Massey. And we're already ahead, one nothing, Just like that. Salvi, Salvador Perez is the next hitter. And he is going to hit a slow roller to short, but T.A. takes care of that. And uh, there's one down. Caden Wallace up. And Caden Wallace goes right up the box, right through the box and into the uh, into center field. And he has a base hit. So, see, our offensively, we're fine. Soto is up. Let's see if Soto can jack one out of here. He doesn't. He And did we... Did they double him off? They doubled him off. But anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, offensively, we're not too bad. We're better than we've, we've been in years. So that's good. But the pitching has just been horrid. And so let's see if we can, uh, if um, Brito can pitch well. He leads off with a not a, not a, doesn't inspire a lot of uh, confidence in that uh realm as the leadoff hitter gets a double for the White Sox. So they got a man at second with no outs, but then he strikes out the next batter, which is awesome. And then we've got the very vanilla Andrew Vaughn. Now, I'm a White Sox fan in real life, and I can tell you, I do not like Andrew Vaughn. He is a very vanilla hitter. He's not that good. The, the hype around him was a lot more than what has been delivered on the field. And now here's Colson Montgomery, who we are... Uh, eagerly awaiting his arrival, but um, I think the White Sox would be smart to keep him in the minors all of this year because this is a lost year in real life for the White Sox, who just hit a double with Colson Montgomery and um, have taken a one uh, or tied the game at one. And uh, Brian Ramos is the batter, and he's going to ground out. So that's going to be it for the White Sox. But they did tie the game at one. In the first inning, we're going to the second. And we're going to have Jairo Pomeraz leading off. He's hitting 200 on the year. Um, four for 20. And he hits a, he gives that thing a ride, and it's over the center fielder's head for a double. So we got the leadoff hitter aboard. See, I mean, and really, this kind of offense has even been missing in the last uh, couple of games against the White Sox. So... It's nice to see it uh, coming back again. Bobby Witt Jr. is up. He got the righty on the lefty. He's going to hit a slow grounder to short, which T.A. takes care of, and that's one down with this man still at second base. Johan Roja hitting zero on the year, but he has a three thirty three on base percentage. Only four at-bats, though, and he strikes out. So that will be um, two down, and Diego... Hernandez is the batter. And Diego Hernandez, can it get it down? Oh, uh, yes, he did, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him. And it worked. No, it didn't. No, it did not. He was out. So anyway, James Outman is up then. And Brito is back uh, in the field with his team, and he allows a hit right up the middle, past the shortstop. And that will be the... The leadoff hitter is aboard. We're going to check him. We're going to do the pitch out because he can run. Outman can definitely run. And so Brito is going to deliver. And we're not going to get uh, Outman at second. So he steals, but there's two strikes on the hitter. Hopefully we can get him out. Well, we'll get him out, but it's going to be a fly ball that will advance Outman, I believe. No, it doesn't. Outman stays right where he is. I don't know why that happened, but, uh, yeah, I'm glad it did. So we've got one out, man at second. Now the ground ball to second will advance Outman to third, but now there's two outs. And that brings up Michael Ciani, the center fielder. Don't know a lot about him. I don't even know if he's real, but he strikes out, real or not. And so it stays tied at one apiece as we go to the top of the third inning with Tommy Troy, our bad defensive shortstop. And I can say that because everything that's it's hit the shortstop that's not right at him, he doesn't play. 
There's one down, and Michael Massey is up. But again, I'm the manager of the Kansas City Royals, not the GM, so I have to deal with what the GM gives me. Uh, Perez is up, two down. He does. He laces one right between short and third, so that'll bring up Soto. Hopefully Soto can hit a, hit a home run here, give us a nice... Or no, that's Caden, Caden Wallace is up, and he strikes out. He's a good hitter. Uh, you know, I like Caden Wallace, but he got out in that situation. We're going to the bottom of the third with Brito still pitching fairly well. So um, I like that, but he, again, allows the leadoff. This is the third consecutive inning he's allowed the leadoff hitter to reach base. And he is good at stealing, so we're going to do the pitch out, try to keep an eye on him. Let's even uh, throw to first. All right, so, oh, but then the ball gets away from Selvi and the guy goes to second, although we've seen that happen uh, last inning, and nothing came of it, but he walks the batter, so there's no outs, two runners on, hopefully this is the double play, and it will be, so we turn the DP, the sweet DP, and there's two down with a man 90 feet away, And that is going to be a deep fly ball to right field, which will be played for the out. And the game stays knotted at one. Going to the top of the fourth, Soto up. And Soto is going to walk. Pomerez is up. He strikes out. Bobby Witt Jr., Bobby Witt Jr., did you take it out of the park? No, no, it's a fly ball to center. Just like when I'm really at the ballpark, I can't really tell if it's a home run or not. Anyway, there is going to be a base hit. So we've got two runners on now with two down. And uh, Hernandez up. He's a key hitter right here. We could use a run, and but we don't get it hit right at the third baseman and he just touches third for the out we're going to the bottom of the fourth Brito though is pitching well for us so we're going to have to hope that that continues that is going to be a base hit and so for the fourth consecutive inning Brito has allowed the leadoff runner to get aboard we are going to do a pitch out again because the guy can steal he doesn't obviously on the pitch out and that's going to be a ground ball past the second baseman at least we held the runner at second so there's two runners on nobody out we need another double play or a strikeout or something that, like that and we don't even get the lead runner because there's an error on the I believe on the shortstop yep so Troy couldn't handle it he is a terrible shortstop. I don't know why we've got him, but <laughs> that's a pop-out. That's going to help. A foul out to third base. That helps. There's one down. Base is still loaded in a 1-1 game with Michael Ciani up at the plate. And he hits Ciani. Come on. That was like one of the last things that we could really have afforded to do. So he hits a batter, but do we turn it? Yeah, we turn the double play. So the run does come in, though. Because Bet Brito hit the batter with the bases loaded. And here is Tommy Troy hitting 185. His batting average certainly is not worth the bad fielding. But he does lace one between first and second, so that's nice. Let's see what his running stats are. Yeah, he can run. Let me see if he can steal second. I mean, he's got to help us somehow. And he doesn't. He gets easily thrown out. So there's one down. One down, and that's going to be a fly out to right. i got to try to make something happen here. Salvador Perez is the batter. And he's going to hit it up the middle. So that will bring up Caden Wallace, I believe. Caden Wallace hitting 290 on the air. And he strikes out.
So we don't get a, the uh, we don't get the run back, but we're still only losing two to one here. Bottom of the fifth, Brito is pitching well, giving me the innings I need too, because the bullpen has been dogged lately. Obviously, when you allow 15 runs to a team, you're dogging your bullpen, and that is the fifth consecutive inning he's allowed the leadoff hitter on. I don't know what is the thing with the leadoff hitter. Maybe we need to have him down in the batting cages or something and have a guy get a, a single off of him and then bring him out onto the field. But now there's runners at second and third with uh, nobody out, so this doesn't look good. But he strikes that guy out. Brian Ramos is up. He's hitting 328, but let's hope that that's just a uh, small sample size. No, he walks him. Bases are loaded now. We could use a double play. A double play would be good. Outman is up at the plate. And Outman is going to not make an out. <laughs> he is going to drive in a, a run or two. Yeah, uh, a run. One run. But the bases stay loaded and only one out. And it, that eats up wit, so... It gets right past him down the left field line, and uh, I think the floodgates are opening here. The White Sox have pretty much owned us this year, and now they have a 5-1 to one lead, and we only have one out with runners at second and third. And that one gets past Massey. Defensively, yeah, defensively we... We uh, leave something to be desired, for sure. So it's 7-1. to one. Not looking good here. I'm going to leave him in for at least the fifth. I mean, you know, I don't want to dog the bullpen too much, even though we do have an off day. So it really doesn't matter. But that was an RBI triple. So it's eight to one. That'll be a fly out to left. Probably no advancement, and there isn't. And uh, up steps Oscar Colas. And he's going to ground out to the pitcher, but the biggest, the big damage was done. Going to get the uh, bullpen going. We're going to get Bryce Hubbard up. And then we'll go back to the action. Juan Soto is the batter. Now, I have seen us piece together a run here and a couple runs there and another run there and come back from a deficit like this. But that's going to take some work. And uh, so far, Montgomery doesn't... Uh, or no, now they got Matt Bush out there. So they've already taken Montgomery out for some reason. But anyway, the White Sox pitching has not seemed to be giving us that, that in that we're going to need. Rojas is up and he strikes out. So I'm just going to go right to the pen and get Hubbard in. Hubbert on the year, 11 and two-thirds innings pitched and a 771 earned run average. As I said, the pitching has been the bugaboo of the team. And coming into the season, if you recall, if you saw the uh, video that I did on the opening game, the uh, opening day game against the Twins, I talked about the team and how the pitching was a big question mark. And now the question has been answered. It's not very good. But there's two down quickly here. Still, we're losing by seven, so that's a bad thing. <laughs> and he does get out of the inning quickly, so that's nice. But, uh, yeah, we're losing eight to one, and Diego Hernandez is the batter for us. And he is going to strike out. That brings up Tommy Troy. He singled last time, but this time he struck out, and uh, Mike Michael Massey is up. 
And he's going to lace one that eats the third baseman alive down the left field line, and so that'll be a double for him. And that brings up Perez. Now, Perez, no, that great play by Outman gets them out of the inning. And so we're going to the bottom of the seventh. Um, Hubbard is out there dealing to Outman, and he strikes Outman out. Next batter is going to hit a fly out to right. So there's two down, two down quickly, and it's nice that Hubbard is uh, getting the outs quickly so that possibly he can get us through the rest of the game. We go to the top of the eighth, losing 8-1. Eight Matt Bush is out there. Matt Bush has a 142 earned run average, by the way, so I don't know how that happened, but... He walks the leadoff hitter, which is a good sign. Juan Soto is the next hitter. Juan Soto is going to hit one right up the middle for a base hit. And we're going to have runners at the corners. Runners at the corners with nobody out. And Pomeraz is the hitter. And he is going to fly out to left field, and that is not going to allow for any advancement. We still have runners at the corners now with one out. Bobby Witt Jr. should be hitting better than he is, you would think. We locked him up to an extension, too, so rain is beginning to fall. Hmm. All right, well, I guess that wasn't a big a big deal. But anyway, yeah, he's only hitting 183. So, and he strikes out there on a ball in the dirt. So there's two down, and Roja is the batter. And he strikes out on an outside pitch that didn't look like it should have been a strike, and I thought he checked it up, but he didn't. Apparently, the umpires didn't feel like he did. Hubbard is out there for his third inning of work. He has been efficient and good, but that again gets past Troy for the uh, for a base hit. And then uh, the next batter smokes one to left field, and now there's runners at second and third with nobody out. Now Hubbard is all of a sudden in trouble, but I'm gonna he's gonna get through this inning. I'm going to make him get through this inning. Um, there is one down, though, and Mr. Vanilla Vaughn. Vanilla Vaughn is up. Vanilla Vaughn is going to hit a base hit. That was a key hit for them. So there's only one base advancement on that. And uh, we only get one out on the next batter, so another run scores, and it's 10-1. to 1. And Hubbard deals and strikes him out, so... He will get through the game because we're in the top of the ninth, and I don't see us getting nine runs. Zamora comes on to pitch for the White Sox. And we fly out to center on the first batter. And the next one is Tommy Troy. Tommy Troy is going to fly out. There's two down very quickly. And that brings up Michael Massey back to the top of our order. And he is going to hit a deep fly to center to end the game. And we lose again. We lose spectacularly. The leadoff home run we get uh, is a little feather in the cap, but uh, we're going to finish today and then finish today, and then we are going to have a game against the Orioles coming up. But we look at the standings, and you can see we are now 5-14. and 14. We're better than Texas by a half a game. They're 5-15. and 15. And uh, we are not better, it does not appear, than anybody else. So... 
So that's where we stand, and that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.